Common factors and factoring by grouping. So this is the start of our factoring lessons that are very essential skills that you need to use for the rest of your math life. You need to know how to factor. You need how to do it really well. And the most important start to factoring is to always look for a common factor. So that's what we're going to do in this lesson. So before we start factoring terms with variables in it, let's talk about just what a factor is. So if I gave you two numbers, let's say I gave you 12 and 18, and I said, what are the factors of 12? So factors are two numbers that product, their product, well, it could be more than two numbers, but numbers who multiply to give you 12. So because 12 is an even number, you know that 12 is divisible by two. Any even number is divisible by two. So if I divide 12 by two, I will get two times six. So two times six, these are factors of 12. Now there are prime factors and prime factors means you're using prime numbers, which of course is a number that can only be divided by itself or one. So six obviously is not a prime number, but it is a factor of 12, but six can be broken down into two more factors, which are two and three, because two times three is six. So that means that two times two times three would give me 12, that four times three is 12, and two times six are, is also 12. Okay, so that's how you would break this down. Now, if I do the same thing with 18, I would say 18 is two times nine, but nine is three times three. So when I write it like this, I guess I could put little times in between here that might help you out. So if I said 18 is two times three times three and 12 is two times two times three, and I said, what is the common factor of 12 and 18? You could say, well, two is because they both divide by two, but it's not the greatest common factor. Remember that from somewhere in, in elementary school, what is the greatest common factor? So the greatest common factor, the largest number that divides into both 12 and 18 would be six. So two times three here and a two times three here. So I could say 18 is also three times six, right? Three times six, three times six. So I'm just multiplying these together. So two times six, three times six. So that means that six here would be the greatest common factor of 12 and 18. Okay, so what happens when we um, put some variables in here? So let's say, for example, that I want you to find the greatest common factor. We're gonna do a bunch of different examples that get progressively harder. Um, and again, this is really important. So what's the greatest common factor of 5x and 25? So I have 5x plus 25. So you'd say, okay, well, what number can I divide into both of these numbers? So I can divide 5x by 5, and I can divide 25 by 5. So that means if I took a 5 out of both of these terms, so taking a 5 out of it means I'm dividing, right? 5x divided by 5 leaves me with an x, and 5 goes into 25 five times. Now the nice things about common factoring or any of the factoring is you can always check your example by expanding. So if I did five times x, five x, five times five, 25, I can double check to make sure that I've done the work properly. Okay, so let's try a second example. This time we're going to use a trinomial. Two x squared minus two x minus six. And I want to know what is a common factor of these three terms. So what can I divide each of these terms by? It has to go into all three. You can't just, well, you can, but that's another story for another day. But if I said, what goes into each of these three terms? I'd say, well, I can divide two into other, every one. So if I did two, I'd be left with x squared minus x minus three. So remember, all I'm doing is dividing each term by two. I expand and I can double check my answer. What if I had this question it is 24 X to the fifth plus six X cubed. Okay, so now I've got um, 
both constants here, or the coefficients that I can find a common factor for, and the number of x's that each one of these has. So if I look at these, what number, what's the largest number I can divide into 24 and 6? So I would look at this one first and say, oh, what if I, does 6 go into 24? And of course the answer is yes, it does. It goes in four times. You need to know your multiplication skills really well. Whoops. So I'm going to put a 6 here. Now the question is, how many x's can I take from each of these? Well, this one is 5 and this one is 3. So I can take 3 from both of them, right? If I take x cubed out, this one would still have 2 left and this one wouldn't have any left. Okay, so now I divide each by 6x cubed. So 6x cubed goes into here, so you can think of dividing it. 6 into 24 was 4, and x to the fifth, 5 minus 3. I'm using exponent laws, and I get x squared. Now double check, 6 times 4 is 24, x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth. Now what about this? And this is where some students make a mistake, and they'll just not do anything with it. So well, it all divided into that. But you have to think about this being divided by 6x cubed. So that went in one time. Because when I expand, I have to get back to this question. So now 6x cubed times 1 is 6x cubed. So don't, don't just throw that one away. Okay, let's go to another one I've got here that I think you'll find interesting. Of course, it's all interesting. Okay, so I have 18x squared y cubed and minus 12xy. Okay, so I look at the coefficients first. Coefficients, I'm talking about the numbers. 6, 18, 12. What is the greatest common factor? Start with the smallest one because there's no point in saying, well, 9. Well, 9 doesn't go into 6. Well, you could divide it, but it doesn't factor out nicely. But I can take a 6 out of each of these terms, right? 6 goes into 6, 18, 3 times, 12, 2 times. And now I look at the variables. So I have x cubed, that one has 3, that one has 2, that one has 1. So the most I can take from each of them, it's like if I had somebody with candy and, and I said, I want you all to give me one candy. You had 3, you had 2, you only have 1. But if I said, everyone give me 3 candies, well this guy couldn't give me 3 candies because he doesn't have any. This one only has 2 if x's were candies. Okay, so I'm only taking out 1x. It's all this one can give. And all the y's this one can give is 1y. So that's what I'm going to take out, a 6xy. Now I have to divide each of these terms by 6xy. So the 6, that's going to be just 1. x cubed divided by x is x squared. And y squared divided by y is y. So that's the first term. 6 goes into 18. Now watch your sign here. It's plus. So it's going to be plus 3. x squared divided by x is 1x. And there's 3 y's divided by 1. I'm subtracting the exponents. And the last term, 6 goes into negative 12, negative 2 times. And the x's and y's divide into each other to make a 1. So that's the end of that. Check by expanding and you will get back to that what we started with. Okay, so that was a little bit more difficult. Now this one is one that I find some students have trouble just visualizing it, so I'm going to try to make this as simple for you as possible. Now, if I had something like this, and I said, what, what is similar on both, what can I take out of both of these? Well, like five and three, no, x, this one doesn't have an x, but they both have an a plus b. So the a plus b, you can think of it as like being a little brick here. So I'm going to take out the brick. So I'm taking out a plus b. And what am I left with? In brackets, 5x plus 3. I'm going to do that another way for you in case you didn't catch that. But if you see, if you expanded this, a plus b times 5x would be this. a plus b times 3 would give me that one. The other way you can do it, and maybe this might help you see it, I'm going to say let 
a plus b in brackets equal y. So I'm going to start by just substituting in a y where I see the a plus b. So that would be 5xy plus 3y, right? If I replace these with a y. And now if I took out a common factor here, I would say, well, I have a y in each one and I have 5x plus 3. But the y is a plus b. So in the end, I'd have to put the a plus b back in for a y. And you can see that I end up with exactly what I had here. It's a, a little bit visually interesting and difficult for some people to see, but maybe this will help you see how you can pull out that common factor. Okay, so one that is kind of similar but different is this question here, and I'm going to um, emphasize this one because it's another one that I see people make mistakes with often. Okay, so what is common here? Now, after doing the last example, you'd probably tell me x minus y. So if I take out an x minus y, if I divide each of these terms by x minus y, what am I left with? So you'd say bracket, 3t, and then what about this thing? I'm dividing this by x minus y. So it's like dividing 4 by 4 or 10 by 10. It goes in once and there's a minus sign. So I need minus and 1 here. Now expand and you'll see that you get right back to what I said you would get, right? Okay, so now we're going to do a little factor by grouping. I'm going to switch this over. I'm kind of running out of paper, so I hope you don't mind that I just flip it over this time. So factor by grouping is what it says. You're looking for little groups. You're going to try to regroup the equation. Now remember that if you have an equation, um, you can rearrange it if it's all just a, you know, you're adding three or four terms together. If I add four terms together, it doesn't matter what order I add them in. If I said, what's one plus four plus three, I could add four and three and then add one, or one and three and then add four, right? I can do it in any order. So in this little exercise, factor by grouping, you're looking for, first of all, what's common here. So you can see these ones both have a C and these ones both have a D. And if I pull out a C out of these two. So here's a place where I'm going to be making little brackets like this. Okay, so I'm going to do this. There's still a plus sign in between, so I'm not changing the question in any way. But if I take out a C here, I'm left with an A plus B, right? Take out C. C times A is AC. C times B is BC. And then if I take out a D out of these two terms, you can see now that I have what I had in the last question, which is this a plus b that I can pull out times c plus d. So that's how you do a factor by grouping. And you say, well, these were all added. No, they're all multiplied. But look what happens if you expand. I get a c, a d. There's a c, a d. And then I have b c plus b d. So that's the way it goes. Um, a little more difficult, one more factor by grouping. I have 2x squared plus 6y plus 4x plus 3xy. Now you're going to look at that and say, well, how, how am I supposed to factor by grouping this? Look at these two terms. There's, I could take out a 2 and I'm left with an x squared and a 3y. But that's not doing anything good for this one, is it? So this is an example where you need to rearrange the question because you want to end up with something like this, okay, where you have a common, a common little factor here that you can pull out. So I'm going to rewrite the question because I see that these two terms have a y in them and these two terms just have x's. So let's rewrite it as 2x squared plus 4x and then I'm going to do plus 3xy plus 6y. And what I'm going to do now 
a little bit of magic, I'm going to take a common factor out of the first two. So what's common out of these two? So I can take a two out of each and I can take an X from each. So I'm going to say two X. And what am I left with? Divide this by two X and you would have an X. Divide four X by two X and I'm left with a two. Okay, now on the next part here, what can I take out of both of these? Well, I can take out three and y, right? Three goes into six and they both have a y. So I'm gonna take out three y and look what I'm left with, x plus two. And there, Eureka, <clears throat> I've hit that magic moment where I see that this and this are the same and they are common factors. So I'm gonna take out x plus two and I'm left with bracket 2x plus 3y. And there's a really nice, a little more difficult, but I think you can figure that one out, right? You just have to look for combinations that it's going to leave you with one of these little terms like this. So look for things where they have something that you can pull out of both of them and then You'll be so happy when all of a sudden you see, oh yeah, I've got this one and this one now. I can pull that out. And what are you left with? And what goes in the second bracket is just what is here, right? Oh, 2x and 3y. You could go back and expand all this. And again, that is a wonderful way of checking your work. So 2x times x is 2x squared. And then 2x times 2 is 4x. Or I should go down to this one, right? X times 2x is 2x squared. X times 3y is 3xy. And then I have 4x and 6y. And that takes me back to the question I started with. Okay, so that's factor by grouping. Next lesson, we're going to get into some factoring of trinomials. And this is all very important material and skills that you need to know in order to be successful with your lessons on quadratics. Hope that helped you out. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave comments, ask questions. I'm here to help you. Bye for now.